and I'll ask some questions. On this floor is one of the most important historic artifacts, things, in any museum in America. We call this artifact the Edison Chair. But in order for me to share the Edison Chair with you, I have to ask a favor of all of you. I'm gonna ask that you each take a little trip with me. We're gonna go back in time to 1929. My friends, 1929 is the year that Henry Ford dedicated Greenfield Village to the public for the very first time. 1929 was also the 50th anniversary of the very first demonstration of electric lights by Thomas Edison to the public in 1879 back in New Jersey. Now, Thomas Edison and Henry Ford were best friends for over 40 years. They were closer than a lot of brothers. Mr. Ford wanted to honor his best friend's greatest accomplishment with a huge party to go along with the opening of Greenfield Village. They called the party the Lights Golden Jubilee, 50th anniversary. Thomas Edison was 82 years old, still living in New Jersey. He was invited to come to Dearborn and recreate the first demonstration of electric lights. He agreed. The President of the United States came. Orville Wright, one of the inventors of the airplane, was here. Madame Marie Curie, one of the greatest female scientists of all time, was here. Will Rogers, the great comedian. Guys, anybody who was anybody in America in 1929 came to Dearborn for this party. Now, for weeks before the party happened, they were broadcasting all across the United States in the newspapers and over the radios, asking people at home to listen in on their radios, turn off their lights at home. And at the moment when Edison connected the wires here in Dearborn, turning on the lights here, NBC News was set up right here. NBC News was going to broadcast it out, ask the people at home to turn their lights back on, and we were going to try to light up America. That actually happened. The picture I'm about to show you was taken moments before Edison turned on the lights. Thomas Edison is sitting in the chair at the age of 82. Can we all see him? Yeah. Right where my finger is. My friends, he is sitting in that chair. That is the actual chair that you see in this picture taken in 1929, almost 100 years ago. Now standing next to Thomas Edison, Henry Ford. Standing next to Henry Ford, President Herbert Hoover. Now, the man over on this side of the picture, his name is Francis Yale. When Thomas Edison first opened the Menlo Park Labs back in 1879, this guy was 18 years old. He came to work for Edison the year before Edison perfected the light bulb. They worked together for over 20 years. He was still alive in 29, so he came to help. Shortly after this picture was taken, they gave Edison the signal. He leaned over from the chair to the table, connected the wire. The light bulb came on. NBC News broadcasted out all across America. People at home turned on their lights. We literally lit up America. Thomas Edison stood up out of the chair. Henry Ford was ready and told his people to nail that chair to the floor. It was never to be permanently moved again. Guys, if the building stands another 200 years, it's already almost 100. If it stands another 200 years, this chair should be right here 200 years from today. Today, you can see that the floor all around the chair has been changed over the last 94 years. The boards underneath the chair are the actual boards that were under that chair on that day in 1929, cut out so the chair wouldn't have to be moved. If the light is right, you can still see the nails that hold the chair to the floor. Now guys, I've been working here for 17 years. I have been coming here for over 60. To the best of my knowledge, in the almost 100 years since Thomas Edison stood up and walked away, only one other person has been authorized and allowed to sit in that chair. Just one. And it wasn't Henry Ford. In 1930, Helen Keller came to Greenfield Village. Guys, you probably already know, Helen Keller was blind and deaf from the time that she was just a baby. But she overcame those terrible handicaps with the help of a great teacher, Annie Sullivan, and a loving family. And Helen Keller became a world-famous author. She came here in 1930, and because she couldn't see with her eyes, she saw through touch. 
she was allowed to sit in the chair and see it through the touch of her hands and the touch of her body. Mm. That is the essence. That's a good question. That was a good question. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're awesome. Appreciate you being here, guys. Thank you for coming up.